guys, today we're going to be taking a look at this here Quans brand UV LED outdoor waterproof fixture. It is a 12 volt to 24 volt AC or DC light, 10 watts of LED power. This one is a 395 to 400 nanometer wavelength, meaning it is a black light UV light. Uh, we use these pretty heavily at the Trail of Terror. This one you can tell has some uh, mild rust, nothing too crazy. Uh, the screws are still serviceable. Uh, this is the second year we use this one, and it failed after the first weekend. I'm guessing water got in it because we had two nor'easters this year. So uh, 50 mile an hour wind driven rain, sideways, upside down, you know, whatever into this. So that could be why it died, but we'll tear it apart and see if we can find out what happened. When it did fail, it was in parallel with two other uh, so the same fixtures, and it pulled down the entire circuit. Uh, luckily, the power supply did not fail, but had an internal breaker that tripped just due to the heavy current draw. So uh, let's see what we find out here. All right, so we're going to start by taking off the bracket here. See if maybe something got in moisture wise up front here. I think it's going to be in the back though, probably with the driver. Well, that is uh, quite a piece of glass right there. Uh, looks like they used, I can't tell if that is a adhesive silicone or if it's just a pressure fit. Let's try to pry a little bit with a flat head here. Ah, it's just adhered by pressure from those screws. This gets interesting quickly. The reflector is a piece of aluminum, I think. It has four screw holes, but only two screws. Let's see if there's a reason for that. Ah, uh, they just saved on screws. See, they could have tapped those, but they just didn't. But cost cutting measure, that should never really be going anywhere. The diode looks to be fine. close there. This is metal, just cheap steel it looks like. ST-B or... Backwards 2T-B? Not sure what that might be. Let's go for the back side here. like the screws are all the same size so that keeps that simple. A little point that the screws corroded so quickly they held up they just lost their color and we're a temporary seasonal outdoor haunt so worst case you saw a couple months of weather not much more than that. do we have? This is exceedingly simple. It's just 
to be a LED transformer, a ballast here. LED driver, there we go. Input ACDC 12 to 24 volts, ACDC 2 amp, output DC 16 volt to 42 volt. Hmm, interesting. Power, DC 12 volt, AC 12 volt, 5 to 12 times 1 watt. Hmm, so it looks like this LED, depending on the current and voltage sent, or sorry, just the voltage sent to this, actually varies in power it receives. Just a spacer, but we'll take this apart to see. Maybe there's a fault in the wire, a dead short. Oh, is that it right there? Sorry about the shakiness there. Our uh, suction cup mounts popped loose. It looks like this is just some sort of a separator. And that residue I removed might have just been some weather sealant of some sort. These screws are not the same size, so I do need to keep them separate. So far, though, it's not looking good for having something to repair here. I'm guessing it's that driver that failed. But we'll see soon enough. So they just used silicone rings, I think it is, or rubber or something like that. On everything here to keep it all watertight, or at least relatively so. And the wires come through and feed the circuit board. I'm not seeing any obvious dead shorts. I'm not seeing any obvious wire damage. Really nothing obvious at all here. The wires here look healthy. Do I dare try to take this apart? Well, before we go any further, since it's had plenty of time to dry out, let's throw these screws back in, plug it into power, and see if anything might just light up at this point. Oh boy, this thing may never be properly waterproof again. These gaskets feel somewhat one-time use, at least for the mechanical side of it, with the screw pressure. I will admit, after seeing the inside of this, I feel like I overpaid for it a little bit, unless those LED, LED diodes are just that expensive, or this driver. I think these are about $20, and that was a seemingly good price when I shopped around. But there's not a whole lot to this, obviously. All right, let's apply some power. There we go, good old fashioned Radio Shack power block. Gives us 12 volts DC and 19 amps, so. Is this going to blow up? It's going to blow up big. <laughs> Let's remember the wiring here. Line and neutral. Of course, it's DC. Usually on these, the color of the LED is the positive side. Although, not 100% clear on this, so... 
let's just do our best here. There from residual power in the power supply. Alrighty. Get everything in the shot here in case it's going to blow up, and let's throw some power at it. It works! That is interesting. Well then. power on and off a couple times. I do suppose water got in there and shorted it out and it has since dried and now works. Everything seems to be steady. So we will reassemble this and test it out again. Is it possible that this reflector was shorting things out? That is interesting. Definitely looks possible to me. So, easy fix. Just a smidge of tape to insulate the wire from the reflector. This looks like it'll actually be held in place by the reflector, so I'm not even really worried about it sticking. Per se, the moisture got in that could have bridged the gap and caused the short. It is possible this tape's gonna get a little warm and a little melty. I'm less concerned about that than a dead short. I don't see any marks on the reflector. Mm. A little scuff there, but nothing too crazy. Tiny screws are magnetic, but not in the way I want them to be. screwdriver the right size screw it's just so small and finicky there we go I do have a silicone repair mat on order both to protect the desk from the heat of soldering and just to keep things organized it should be here in the next few days probably have a review on the tech medic channel for that Place our glass window here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that uh, that honestly feels like I think it's paint. Could be wrong. But that really does make things look nice when they really wouldn't without it. <laughs> and yeah, these do need to be quite snug, as that's what holds the seal. Although, obviously, you don't want to go too snug because it is glass versus metal. I'm curious as to what these screws are made out of. Because even though they show the corrosion pretty badly, they've held up well. They are ferrous, clearly, so it could be a cheap stainless, possibly. Around here with the salty air, even off-brand stainless will still rust, so that's very possibly 
exactly what this is, is some uh, stainless steel alloy. <laughs> From everything I could tell, this was just sitting in here somewhat precariously. And then there's a seal nut right there. I guess it's possible some water snuck into here and then dried up and fell out over time. It's just some casting residue there. I love this floating inside the enclosure. It's not even secure at all, other than just wire pressure against it. Well, I do have to say, I'm very glad I didn't just throw this away, as I was thinking about doing when it failed. I was a little bit frustrated that night, not gonna lie. We had a commercial drone pilot filming the haunt, and I was excited about the video, and then of course one of the lights and zombie paintball was out, so the target range was a little dark, and I wasn't happy about that. I think he actually got me repairing switching out power supplies and troubleshooting on the drone video of the haunt which is kind of funny because well, that's what I tend to be doing during the haunt is either running in circles achieving nothing but see looking busy or else repairing things lever actors to death but they can be a little rough at times all right so she's back together Give it a bit of juice. And we shall see if my theory was correct. Three, two, one. Boom, she works. I suppose I will leave this running for a bit to confirm that it remains working. Let's see if I can't find something UV reactive. Oh, ah, this should glow. There we go. Turn off the main light. As you can tell, these things are very bright. 10 watts of LED. Ah, it's equivalent to... I want to say 60 watts. Wow, I can actually feel the heat off of that LED on the back of my hand, so it does produce quite a bit of light. Although the heat sink does a good job. You don't feel it around here, back here. So I might earmark this light for indoor use only. But it does seem that it works, and now you've seen what's inside. Hope this helps somehow. I'm not 100% sure I would fully recommend these after having one fail after only you know a couple weeks of use from a couple years in a row. But the price was not bad. And it does seem to be working now. If you're indoors, these should be great. If you're outdoors, eh, use caution. Uh -huh.